please? Well, do you see a black leather jacket? Fingertip length, like the one Pacino wore in Serpico? Because if you don't, you owe me $379. Well, maybe you didn't see the sign. I you seen the sign, but I didn't come to sunny Florida to freeze my ass off. You got that? Yeah. So you either find my coat or you give me the $379 that my ex-wife paid for it at Alexander's. Rino, vieni qui, puoi spiegare a questo signore, il signor Barboni, si apprestate per questo momento solamente. Ray Bones took my coat? No, no, he didn't take it. He borrowed it. Eh. Così somebody took his coat. So Mr. Barboni tried this other coat and it fit him pretty good. That was my coat. He was wearing it to go home, but he's not going to keep it. No. My car keys are in that coat. Uh, Mr. Barboni is a good customer. You know, he works for Jimmy Cab. <laughs> I know who he works for. Where's your phone? This way. Are you sure it was Ray Bones who took the coat? That's what the man said. Hey, tomorrow I see on the TV weather it's gonna be nice and warm. You don't need the coat. This is it. Hey, Chili, get the coat. But just don't piss the guy off, okay? Then we're gonna have to call Momo and straighten the whole thing out. And Momo's gonna be pissed off for wasting his time. We don't need that, huh? Don't worry. I'm not gonna say any more than I have to, if that. to make a killing. My name's Chili Palmer. Chili's a gangster. Ran a club I used to play at for another gangster back in Miami. How is Momo these days anyway? Dead. So you make movies, huh? I produce feature motion pictures. I got an idea for a movie. Doesn't everybody? Yesterday you were a loan shark. Yeah, but I was never that into it. <laughs> you think the movie business? Being out there on a deal that didn't go through, Harry. One that you don't want to know about. I don't know. I... All right, it's not the kind of thing you do. So I'm thinking, why not send your boy Chili Palmer? If he gets busted, hit on the head, you aren't out a thing, Harry. C-18. Magic number. <laughs> okay. I'm positive it was Susan Hayward. No, no, it was Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford. Excuse me. Wait here. I'd like you to meet my associate, Bear. Movie stuntman, champion weightlifter, as you might have noticed. Throws things out I don't want. I think you ought to turn around and go back to Miami. You're a stuntman, huh? Yeah. You're any good? Am I any good? <laughs> 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 bad for a guy his size. I'll make you a deal. If you can get out of here before I take my coat off, I won't clean up the floor with you and mess up your pretty little costume. You don't know me. You only think you do. Anything. Oh, I'm sure we're completely safe. You all right? Yeah, 
fine. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Bomber! Bomber, give me a gun! No fucking way! You give me a fucking gun! Get back out, Mormon! Don't fuck me, Jack! Yeah, yeah. They're not after me. Just kidding, just kidding. I thought you threw those away. Always check the evidence, Marvin. Those are car keys. That goes a hundred grand. A hundred? Have he was gonna pay you a hundred? Why, what was he gonna pay you? Twenty-five. Oh. Son of a bitch. Shout out to talk nice to people and not shoot at them. Charles Grodin is an accountant who embezzled $15 million from the mob. It is truly in your best interest to just relax. I'm totally relaxed. I want this guy taken off. I want him taken out fast. The mob wants him dead. The FBI want him alive. I'm going to bring him into federal court. Do I make myself understand? These sunglasses, they're really nice. Are they government issued, or do all you guys go like to the same store to get them? And his bail bondsman wants him in L.A. in 72 hours. They can't fly. They also suffer from acrophobia and claustrophobia. I'll tell you what, if you don't cooperate, you're going to suffer from fistophobia. Travo has a funny way of bringing people together. Oh, you're going to outrace the police car? You're going to outrace the police car. Jack, where are you? I'm in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> I'm in Anchorage, Alaska. Why would you do that? No, no, you enjoy yourself. This is my room, and that's your room. Good night. I was somewhere between Toledo and Cleveland. Oh, no, no, come on, come on. Cigarettes are killers. Oh! Who the hell were those guys? Uh, those are hired killers back there. I can't take this. Hired to kill who? Hired to kill them. Wait. He says if you're out here investigating the Tandino murder, you needn't bother coming back. I don't want to take it anymore. A man who claims to be on vacation, you look a lot like you're on a stakeout. Stakeout? No, no. I'm picnicking. This is like a picnic area. I have to ask you some questions about Michael Tandino. I've never been to a cell that had a phone in it. Can I stay for a while? Because I ordered some pizza. We have six witnesses that say you broke in and started tearing up the place, then jumped out the window. May I help you? Yeah. I'm looking for Victor Meadman. I have nothing to say to you. How you doing? You guys don't know nothing about nothing, do you? You just got your badges and your guns and you're on the... Is he? I'd say he's a cop. <laughs> this is a Detroit badge. What the hell are you doing in Beverly Hills? I'm going deep, 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 deep undercover. Back where he doesn't belong. Excuse me, where are the owners of this house? They're in Hawaii for a week while the construction's happening. I'm Axel Foley, Beverly Hills Billy Inspector. You've stolen this house. How do you steal a house? It's my uncle's house. Reunited with all his old buddies. What the hell's going on here? Who the hell are you? I'm Johnny Wishbone, psychic extraordinaire. If you need me, just think. Johnny Wishbone, and I come running. Lots and biddles. It's like kibbles and bits, but different. Oh, this is a big mistake, a big mistake. Would you lighten up and take some risk? This is definitely breaking the law. So how long would it take to shave those legs anyway? I suppose you're trying to be charming. So actually, I'm just offering my grooming services. Get it. Well, let's see. Huh. I'm sorry, I don't see anything of that name. Uh. Check Rolling Stone Magazine's Axel Foley. That's what it is. 
No, no Rolling Stone, no Axel Foley. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, that's all right. You guys probably just made some kind of mistake with reservations. Why don't you just give me another room now, go up and go to sleep? I'm sorry, sir, but there are no rooms available. Don't you think I realize what's going on here, miss? Who do you think I am, huh? Don't you think I know that if I was some hot shot from out of town that pulled inside here and you guys made a reservation mistake, I'd be the first one to get a room and I'd be upstairs relaxing right now. But I'm not some hot shot from out of town. I'm a small reporter from Rolling Stone magazine that's in town to do an exclusive interview with Michael Jackson that's going to be picked up by every major magazine in the country. I was going to call the article, Michael Jackson is sitting on top of the world, but now I think I might as well just call it, Michael Jackson can sit on top of the world just as long as he doesn't sit in the Beverly Palm Hotel because there's no niggas allowed in there. And excuse me, sir. It seems that we do have a, a last-minute cancellation. Uh, there is a room available. It's a suite, but uh, I'll only charge you the single room rate. Thank you. I'm sorry I got upset. It's probably from jet lag or something. I'm very tired. I understand, What's sir. the rate, anyway? Uh, that'll be $235 a night, sir. Get it? OK, we start right here. You. My dad repairs red cars driven by women who are pinheads. My dad doesn't do anything since the crash. My dad gives money to people that doesn't have money. And then people use that money. And then they give other money back and they give the same amount of money back to my dad. My dad doesn't live with us anymore. He lives in New York and drives a taxi. My mom hopes he's going to die real soon. My dad watches TV all day long. My dad works on computers, and he's um, the boss of his company. Time's up, Vincent. Oh. Oh. Hit me because I didn't feel a thing. No! I felt that. Oh, you gotta understand something, Benedict. I like my work. This is the most unfriendly act you're committing. I mean, I don't know what the problem is, but I'm sure it can be resolved without resorting to violence. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You moved too soon. He did? Ooh, a little chest pain. And the first rule in a crisis situation. You negotiate first and you attack last. Well, you negotiate first and then you attack. You never negotiated. Nah. You don't know what kind of an enemy I am. Who are you? Oh, I'm Vincent's brother. We're twins. That's right. You're fired. You have no respect for logic. Okay. But he's got an axe. And I have no respect for those with no respect for logic. You're a very stupid person. 